Okay, uh, we talk about uh, charge credit card. What about authorized credit card? Yes, this is more complex uh, scenario, uh, but it, I think it's widely used uh, in different e-commerce solutions. So instead of creating a charge and immediately grabbing the money, you can use authorize uh, command that will only secure the money uh, from the from the customer or reserve it so the the, the balance will be seen as unavailable uh, on the card but it's still not the situation when we get the money uh, there are two more steps that can be performed from this point so uh, we of course publish authorization succeeded or authorization failed but if it's uh, successful uh, we can do one of two possible things we can either capture it or void or sometimes it's called release or, or similarly uh, this means we have some period of time when we have the money reserved but we can decide later if we want to get this money or return to the customer. Yeah, it can be a useful scenario when you're uh, only allowed to capture the money when you ship the order. So some in some countries there are laws that you can capture the money only when you ship the order. So or uh, complete the, 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 the service for the customer. So uh, you cannot take the money from the customer before you uh, fulfill the order. So uh, it might be quite useful scenario where uh, when you only lock the money and then take it when you finish the, uh, the fulfillment process. And, uh, but there's one downside of authorize and capture scenario where um, because authorization is usually valid only for up to seven days so you have usually only seven days to capture the money and uh, it depends on multiple factors like banks uh, which issue the credit cards they uh, this this period may be longer and shorter it all depends. We don't have uh, any uh, possibility to to change that um, time, uh, which is valid for capturing the money. Yes, but uh, I think seven days is yeah. good enough for most uh, businesses. Even if you ship uh, physical goods, you have time to complete the order, to check your inventory. Yeah. If if all the ordered items are actually available and the same applies to uh, to more virtual goods like some tickets for example <coughs> even if you have a virtual inventory like you don't have this yeah. stock of tickets you don't have to print them you just generate them in your system and send via email there can always be a possibility that the event uh, f for which you you sell these tickets has uh, been sold out. So you ha you have this uh, period of time to check if the order can actually be delivered to your customer. Yeah, that's quite useful. So uh, you said about voiding authorization. So it's uh, to clarify. Voiding or releasing is only available for authorization. Uh, you cannot void already captured uh, payment. You cannot void the charge payment. There are some cases where uh, voiding the charge is possible, but uh, it's digging too much into details of credit card payment industry, uh, which is very interesting, but I don't think we... <laughs> we need to cover that uh, scenario. Uh, most of the modern payment gateways uh, 
just give you one operation, which is release, and uh, it it doesn't matter whether it's an authorization or capture. They just release the money to the customer when you ask for it, and they care about the process under the hood. Uh, also, uh, adapters, uh, adapter libraries like Active Merchant does the same. You just void the uh, the payment and library itself does the sufficient uh, operation yeah it basically decides if a void or refund is needed and perform the other yeah. operation that's yeah. valid uh, but uh, yeah there is a slight difference and uh, i can say that void is uh, you can avoid a payment with less uh, side effects and less problems. It just cancels it like it if it never happened. And refund that can be performed after the payment uh, was captured, it's a bit more complex. And sometimes uh, payment providers don't like uh, if you refund too much. So usually it's better to avoid your payment if it's possible yeah by refund we we mean uh, refunding returning the money to uh, customer the money which you already took from the uh, credit card payment and uh, i don't know the scenario where customer complains and uh, wants uh, uh, only part of the order so you can make a partial refund so only give back some amount of money uh, or uh, I don't know you, you want to uh, you ca you you weren't able to uh, to fulfill the order and or you missed something uh, in the package and customer complains hey I want my money back f because this item wasn't present in the package so you can return the money uh, and we can we need to think about this operation like uh, some like uh, re maybe not reversing but uh, returning the money. It's like instead of taking the money, we return it all money which we already possessed uh, from the payment process. Yes, uh, you mentioned uh, partial refunds and it's interesting uh, because, like you said, uh, you can only return part of the money. For most uh, payment providers, the same applies to the capture operation. So sometimes you can only, you can authorize some amount, but, but capture less than what, yes. what has been uh, authorized and it also m may be used in some businesses but looking uh, at all this um, uh, raises a question how to keep track of the yep. money flows between the, mm, the customer what goes through the gateway how much have we actually captured and how can we achieve this 